Hey everyone, back for part two of our shipping video. So today, I'm, or uh, for this video, I'm just going to show you how uh, how we ship the plants. Um, I've been doing it this way for probably about three years now, and I haven't had any issues. Well, not any, but very, very few issues in terms of shipping. So unless I hear otherwise, I'm going to keep doing it this way. Basically, we use uh, just your plain old Ziploc uh, Ziploc bags. Um, for the different uh, varieties of plants. One of the things that I like to make sure is, is you know when you open up the bag what plant is in that bag. I know one of the frustrations I had when I first started ordering plants online, I ordered from a, a fairly big company down south and uh, one of the things that bugged me was they never labeled anything. They just threw all the plants into one big box and just shipped it off. And if you're, if you're ordering a lot of different plants, and at that time I was, you know, 12 or 13 different varieties of stem plants, and, and you're not that experienced, you're not going to know which one is which just by looking at them. So that's one of the things I kept in mind when I decided to start doing this, was I want to make sure you know what plant is in, what plant you're getting. So basically, I mean, it's nothing fancy. I basically just write on, on the uh, Ziploc bag what it is. Uh, I use a few different sizes of bags. Uh, usually it's one species per bag, but sometimes there might be a, f uh, a few different species. But I make sure that um, if there are two species in a bag, that it's pretty clear which one is which, right? You're not going to confuse an Amazon sword with Kabomba or something, right? If you don't know the difference, you're going to have you're going to have some issues with <laughs> with plants. So that's basically what I do. So what I'll do is I'll pack up. I'll just show you how we do this here. Um, in this, in this particular bag, we've got some Omania. So we put that in there like that. And we also have an Amazon. This, is, this one doesn't look terribly good. An Amazon sword. And we'll just close that one up. We basically just sort of seal it up a little bit. Fold it in half and squeeze out all the air. I try not to make the plants too wet because they can tend to turn to mush. As long as they're damp, that's good enough. Uh, okay, in this one we've got uh, we've got some willow moss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you love willow moss, eh, buddy? Why do you willow moss? Yeah. <laughs> So we got willow moss, flatten that out. What else? Uh, we got some high grow. I'm just gonna put these, uh, I just grabbed some spare plants on it. And some Ludwigia. <laughs> put that in there. That's a big plant. That's a big one, eh? <laughs> that one and then uh, one more here I think it's some Bacopa this isn't necessarily the portion size usually it's a little bit bigger than this but I'm just doing this for an example here so we get all our bags uh, packed up and then what I do I take another Ziploc bag Put them inside that one. So and then your invoice and uh, if you're a new customer I also put in a business card in case you need to get in touch with me. Put that into a Ziploc bag so it doesn't get all wet and that goes in the bag as well. Take this up. Now in this second bag we want to make sure <clears throat> we want to keep, we want to create an air cushion for the uh, for shipping. So we sort of leave it open, and then we zip lock it like just like so. And you can see there's a nice. Make sure it's a nice solid seal. Okay, so that's that's for that part. Now in terms of the shipping, I've always used uh, bubble millers like this, unless unless it's a really big shipment of plants. 
uh, then I'll then I'll use a box. But I've been using this for uh, for a number of years and haven't had any any sort of issues with it. So what I do is put it in there. have your shipping label on there and then there's space so just fold that over and that's a, and that also creates a when you seal this envelope it also creates another another uh, bubble right so that's pretty pretty tight and uh, what we can even try and do here I'm gonna do a little experiment I'm just gonna keep these in this bag today is what July. What's the date today? July. Huh? July. July. That's right. July third. Oh yeah. So today is July third. <laughs> I'm gonna keep these in the bag for one month or one month, one week, which is which is way more time than it would ever take to get to you. Like I said in the last video, one, two, three days tops. But I'm gonna keep these in a, in a week. We're gonna come back with another video and see what they look like after a week. Uh, and just to show you how solid this is. I don't know how much pressure I can put on there, but I'm about 250 pounds and I put almost my whole body weight onto that, onto that thing and it, uh, you know, it stays pretty solid. And that, that basically just prevents the bag from getting crushed. Uh, like I say, I, I don't know how many, I've, I've sent thousands of plants orders like this in this bag, in this type of, type of bag, and it hasn't had any problems. In the winter time, it will be, it will come signature required, so the post office person will not leave it outside, right? If you're not there to get it, it'll go to the, it'll go to the post office, and you'll have to pick it up. In the warmer months, like now, summertime, I don't bother with that option. It is an extra dollar fifty, and it's in this in this climate, it's not necessary. Although, uh, the, it, it, if, if if they have no place to put the, the package, they'll take it to the post office anyways. So that's how we ship our plants at theplantguy.org, and uh, let's come back in a week and see how these plants are doing. What? All right. See you later. What?